talk newborn jaundice. So newborn jaundice is super common. It happens usually in the first two weeks of life, if it's gonna happen at all. And it can be partially related to babies being a little bit dehydrated. When they're first born, you know, your colostrum is really concentrated. And so it gets all of the nutrients they need, but does not have a whole lot of water in it, uh, which means the bilirubin level can go up. But it's caused by the breakdown of red blood cells. So babies are all born with extra red blood cells. And as they're breaking down those extra cells, it releases hemoglobin. And uh, that hemoglobin turns into bilirubin in their body. So... Um, that, that bilirubin is what causes the jaundice, and we use phototherapy, which is bright blue lights, to help it turn into a form that they can pee it out so it leaves their body twice as quick. I see a question about COVID. Uh, from what I'm seeing, the kids are doing a lot better than the adults when they do get COVID, but they are still pretty miserable. Um, you can use a bulb sucker to suck out their nose. Saline drops are optional. If you wanted to do saline, you can put the drop right below their nostril and they'll suck it in. And sometimes that'll make them sneeze and get the boogies out and then you don't have to do anything. Uh, but if you want, you can also bulb suck. If you are bulb sucking, I recommend closing one nostril when you suck it out of the other side, kind of like when you blow your nose, you'll get more out that way. Um, also humidifier can help. Things like Vicks or eucalyptus oil, peppermint oil in a diffuser can help, help them breathe a little easier. You can also put the Vicks on the bottoms of their feet. I don't know why it helps, but it does. <laughs> um, Preeclampsia, so being high risk for preeclampsia doesn't necessarily mean you're gonna get it, um, and it doesn't necessarily mean you'll have to have a C-section. You might need to be induced. With preeclampsia, it's more common the closer you get to your due date, and if you go past your due date, it's even more likely that you'll get it. So sometimes they'll do an induction early. They'll start with something like, um, oh man, what's it called, Cytotec uh, induction, where they put that in and um, that can start your cervix ripening and then they give you pitocin to make contractions happen. Uh, in my experience, I'm on the I'm on the pediatric side, so I only see the ones that are high risk, but um, the deliveries, I mean. But yeah, it seems that inductions are a little more likely to go to C-section, but not all of the time. So um, your OB will be able to guide you definitely on that. With group B strep, super common, about 40% of women have group B strep, and that uh, we treat with antibiotics during the labor. You need at least two doses to be fully covered, and it takes about four hours to get that second dose in. So um, if you have group B strep, you should go in early on in your labor so that you can get treated so the baby doesn't get it. Question about sippy cups. Uh, so I find a lot of kids don't like sippy cups and some will just go right to regular open cups and that's totally fine. You could try a water bottle with a straw too. Um, the longer you wait to get rid of the bottles, the harder it is because they get to be toddlers and they start throwing tantrums. But um, we recommend starting around a year to stop the cup and, or sorry, stop the bottle and go to cups. Uh, but if I'm being honest, so I've talked to pediatric dentists about it. You can do it any time in the first six years of life. And my daughter actually used a bottle until she was like four. So, um, but it was really hard to get her off of that. Uh, part of the reason I kept her on it was because we moved and she had some regression. So she was using it for comfort. Um, let's see, adenoids and trouble breathing. That's one of the few reasons we do a tonsillectomy in kids these days. We don't do it for strep anymore. But if they have large tonsils and adenoids and they have sleep apnea, so they're waking up really tired in the morning or falling asleep during the day or snoring really loudly, um, or sometimes it causes hyperactivity during the day, those could be reasons that your doctor might recommend getting the tonsils and adenoids removed. Um, they can sometimes grow back too, and so sometimes it has to be repeated, which really stinks. You can also use something called Flonase, which is a nasal steroid nose spray, and that can shrink down the sides of tonsils and adenoids. So sometimes that can, that can help you avoid surgery. A um, 14-month-old that's not walking and talking yet can still be within the normal range. Uh, mine didn't walk until she was 18 months old, but uh, if you are worried about developmental delays, you should talk with your doctor about it. There are these things called early intervention programs where they can go to a physical therapist, an occupational therapist, and a speech therapist, and they can help with all of those um, delays that are going on. Uh, and what do we do after baby's born? I love this question. So um, the first thing we do, so you, if the baby's term and comes out doing well and crying, we can put them on your belly to, to do what we call the resuscitation, which usually they don't need to be resuscitated, but it mostly means drying them off and getting them snuggled up against you to stay warm. 
um, if the baby's not term, so if they're a little bit early, or if they're not immediately crying, we'll bring them over to the warmer, dry them off, uh, give them a little stimulation like rub their backs to get them to start breathing, and we can do some suctioning with um, one that's plugged into the wall. It's really strong. We can go all the way down in their nose and in their mouth, all the way to their belly, suck out any fluid that's in there, and you know help them help them get breathing. Usually they're on the table for just a couple of minutes. Um, let's see. Four months old with proper head control. So uh, at four months, when the baby's laying down and you go to lift them up, their head still kind of lags a little bit or sometimes stays midline. Um, they should be able to sort of sit with support. So if you're holding them up, their, their heads will still tilt a little. Around six months old is where they, have, they should have full head control, where they can keep their head straight. And when you go to pick them up, they start to lean forward and help a little bit. Um, a 20 month old with 15 to 20 words, that can be totally normal too. Somewhere around 15 or 18 months, a lot of kids will start adding a bunch of words. And you'll probably notice once they get to that threshold of about 20, they start adding more and more. Also things like waving hi and bye counts as a word. Doing sign language for more or all done counts as a word. Um, all those, any signs count as words. And also if they're making the same sound consistently for something, like if the dog is always called da, that's a word, too. That counts. <laughs> uh, let's see. Whoa. These are going so quickly. <laughs> um, homemade spinach I'm a big fan of. Uh, nitrates we don't worry too, too much with babies. When you make your own spinach puree, you can just, you know, steam it, um, blend it up. I think that's uh, super healthy for them. It's, it's better than the stuff out of the jar, even, because that has preservatives in it. Um, babies who are screaming when you put them down to sleep, super common. If you think about when they're first born, they, they've, they're used to being inside, right? Where they're squished from all sides and held really tightly and warm and constantly moving and always hearing something like your heartbeat. And so once they come out of the body, you put them on a bed, it's still, it's cold, it's flat, it's, um, their arms flop all around, it's really uncomfortable for them. So most babies will sleep a lot better when you're holding them. But that's not really sustainable, and you need to get some rest too. So really, it's something you just kind of have to practice over and over again. The more times you put them down to sleep in their own bed, the easier it gets for them, and the more used to it they get. Always put them face up, because they um, they, they can, like, when they're too little, if you put them on their side, they can flop onto their face and can suffocate that way. So you always want to put them flat on their back. If they roll themselves onto their side, that's okay. And once they're old enough to start rolling, you don't need to go flip them back in the middle of the night. Just always lay them down the first time, uh, face up. You've been back here. Uh, tummy time. So we can start that any time. Usually I recommend it around the two-week visit because you need a little time to kind of, you know, adjust to having a new baby and the sleep deprivation. But even just sitting with baby on your chest, leaning back, counts as tummy time. The idea of tummy time is to get them to work their neck muscles and to lift their head up. So if they're on your chest and they lift their head away, that's great. That's that's the initial point of tummy time. And then as they get a little older, they'll start to push themselves up and eventually roll over. So we want to build all of those skills with that. Um, awesome. Yes, COVID and boogers, as I was saying a little earlier, saline drops are great, humidifier in the room, things like eucalyptus oil, peppermint oil, or Vicks, um, you can rub it on their chest, on their feet, you can put the oils in a diffuser, that can help to dry them up a little bit. Um, and seven month old who doesn't want to eat foods yet, sometimes even up to nine months is okay, just keep offering. The, the one time I recommend rice cereal is if they're having trouble eating or they're spitting a lot of foods out because rice cereal, you mix it with breast milk or formula and it'll um, just be a texture thing and not a flavor thing because some kids just don't like the, the flavors of the foods that they're getting, so they'll spit them out. So if you want to see if it's texture or not, you can do rice cereal for that. Otherwise, you really don't have to do rice cereal. It's just filler. It's like empty calories, not very nutritious. Um, lots, of, lots of better options, like greens especially. <laughs> Um, let's see. So dental cleanings, we should actually, we recommend starting at a year just to get them used to going to the dentist. They'll do like a happy visit where they sit in the chair, they might brush their teeth, they might just sit them there to get used to it. But definitely by age three, they should start going to the dentist regularly every, every six to 12 months. And the dentist will tell you when they need to come back again. Um, with texture sensitivities, usually we'll do feeding therapy for that. So uh, we'll, we can send you to 
um, either a speech therapist or occupational therapist can do feeding therapy, depending on whether it's a, an issue with um, them just like being a sensitive baby or if there's something physical going on that they're having a hard time swallowing certain textures. Some aggression for little babies. I see a three-month-old that's having some aggression and, and tantrums. It's, it's pretty early, but um, usually in the first six months of life or so, they're really only crying if they need something. So I just go through the hierarchy of, like, are they fed? Have they been changed? Um, you know, do they need to be held? And those are kind of the three main things that they need at that age. Uh, sometimes they can get a hair wrapped around a toe or a finger, and you don't know that it's there necessarily. So check their toes, because um, that can be super painful. And can that, that can cause screaming like that. Um, a 13 month old with tantrums is normal though. <laughs> so <laughs> sorry. <laughs> now I see that. Um, yeah. So after a year, the, the terrible twos start somewhere around 15 months or so. And, uh, it's because they keep, they don't have enough words to say what they need yet. They're being pulled around everywhere they go and they don't have any say in their day. So for helping avoid tantrums, I recommend offering choices throughout the day as often as possible. Even a baby that can't talk yet, you can hold up two t-shirts and say, which t-shirt do you want? And see which one they look at longer. Or two different spoons or two of the same spoon. You know, it doesn't matter to you which spoon they use, right? Just which one would you like? Um, and if they're getting to choose things like that throughout the day, they, form, they feel more in control and they're less likely to throw tantrums later. Uh, you can also choose how things are done. So like for older kids, you know, do you want to put your shoes on yourself or do you want me to help you? Or which foot should we do first? Because you still end up with shoes on either way, right? It doesn't really matter, but to them it really does matter how it gets done. Um, anemia during pregnancy is super common. Your blood volume increases and your number of red blood cells doesn't increase as much. So your blood cells get a little bit more diluted. It's, uh, it often does not affect the baby. Babies are really good at sucking out all the nutrients they need from your body. So it more affects mom. They'll also suck calcium out of your bones if they need to. So make sure you're taking your vitamin D and your calcium. You should be taking your iron pills and your prenatal vitamins just to keep yourself replenished because baby will get what they need out of that. Sometimes, rarely, like if you're anemic and also at high altitude, you might, um, the baby might end up a tiny bit smaller, but it's usually not clinically significant. Like it's not gonna harm them. Introducing other foods besides breast milk and formula. So here in the US, we say between four and six months. In Europe, they say six months and up. But um, signs of readiness are if baby's watching you eat and getting really excited, that's the cutest one. You can try giving them a spoon, see if they suck that spoon in. If they stick out their tongue, there's something called this extrusion reflex, where if you put something in their mouth, they'll push it away. That means they're not quite ready to eat yet. So if they suck the spoon in, they should be ready. And then also they need to be able to sit and keep their head up without you know, slumping down or sideways because that's a risk for choking. How many times a day to feed your infant? So a seven month old, really between six and nine months, um, I'd say about two times a day, maybe three times is plenty to offer foods. When you do start offering foods, you can do either baby led where you're giving them solid things to like suck on or kind of gum because they don't have a whole lot of teeth yet. Um, but, or you could do purees, which is a traditional where you're feeding them with a spoon. Either way, I recommend starting water when you start foods because I see a lot of babies get constipated when you just give them the foods. Um, but yeah, just keep offering it throughout the day whenever is convenient for you guys. And then it takes them up to 12 months to be eating like a full regular normal amount, like meals, three meals and two snacks. So you have plenty of time in there to keep adding things in. Um, let's see, sedation for dental cleaning. Ideally best avoided, but if your child is really anxious, it is an option. They do conscious sedation, so something kind of like Benadryl, it'll make them feel like a little bit drunk, a little spaced out, and um, it can help if they're really nervous. If they're not super nervous kids, if they're able to open their mouth and keep it open, then there's no need to do any sedation for that. Uh, let's see, group B strep being positive, sort of something to worry about, um, but not well, if we know about it ahead of time and we can get you those antibiotics, then it's fine. That will treat the baby, that will eradicate it from your body. But um, if you're a group B strep positive and you get to the hospital and deliver within four hours, like four hours or less, baby's considered not adequately treated, so they have to be watched for 48 hours to make sure they're not going to get any symptoms of sepsis. Uh, and then if they do get symptoms, we just give them IV antibiotics. So very treatable, very easy to treat, and... Um, but, you know, one of the more common things, like 40% of women will test positive for groupie strep in their pregnancy.
Melatonin for 20 month olds, I'm not a huge fan of melatonin in kids. It is habit forming or addictive. So if you give it to children or even adults, um, it's something your body normally would produce at night. So melatonin, when you, when you take it by mouth, it tells your body we don't have to make as much. And then over time, you actually become dependent on the pill to fall asleep. So I would suggest not doing it unless you really have to. If you are gonna give it two or three days in a row is all I would do um, because after that they'll become hooked on it. So like if you're traveling and baby's jet lagged, you know, that's a good reason to do melatonin or um, a big change in their life. You've moved to a new house, something like that. You could give it for a day or two to help them fall asleep. Uh, starting tummy time and teaching sign language. So it's tummy time you can start from birth. Um, around the two-week visit is where I start to talk about it with parents. But uh, yeah, you want to do tummy time all the time, 15 to 30 minutes, twice a day, uh, either on the floor on a blanket or on your chest so they can lift their heads up. You can start with sign language really from the beginning. Babies start understanding very early on before they can communicate, and they're able to do some signs before they're able to speak a lot of the time. So my favorite ones were more and all done because it's really obvious if the baby's putting their hands together or putting them apart. Um, let's see. Babies who are not wanting to eat very much. So uh, again, we could do feeding therapy for that. You can talk to your pediatrician about a referral for feeding therapy. Um, some babies really do struggle with flavors and textures more than others. So if your baby's only doing purees and nothing else, that could be a reason. Um, you want to start with purees early on, but if they get up to like nine to 12 months and they're still really finicky about eating, you could ask about whether it's worth going to a feeding therapist. Uh, their main source of nutrition is still breast milk and formula for the first year of life. So foods are really to try out, to try different textures, learn how to swallow and chew, that kind of stuff. Um, it is normal for an 11 month old to prefer mom over dad. Actually, a lot of a lot of babies will prefer mom over dad because they are a source of comfort and food. But um, some babies like their dad more. It's it's totally normal, and they will often switch at different ages, uh, liking one parent more than the other one, and then liking the other one better. Constipation in a seven month old, I would add water into their diet. Make sure you're offering about one ounce of water for each ounce of food that they eat. Um, vibrating croupy sound when inhaling is probably something called tracheomalacia. So the trachea sometimes is a little floppy. And so when they breathe in, they get the strider sound, which is like, Ugh! it could be really scary. And when they get a cough, it gets a lot worse. Um, it's not a dangerous thing. It just sounds really scary. So check with your doctor, see if that might be the case. Babies addicted to the binkies. Um, I... So we recommend weaning them around a year of age from that, but I also feel like it's a comfort object. I don't like pulling comfort objects away from children. So if they need it to fall asleep, just get, keep giving it to them. Definitely in the first six months, they're not gonna be hooked on it. So it's okay to give it all the time and it can help decrease the incidence of SIDS. So I'm a big fan of pacifiers. When you do start weaning it, one way you can do it is to snip the tip off because it feels different and then snip it shorter and shorter over time rather than just pulling it away. Um, or you could just pull it away one day. You know, we're not doing these anymore. It's another option. Um, in terms of thumb sucking, they do have devices that you can put on. I think those are kind of mean. But, you know, as children get older, they will eventually stop sucking on those things and it gets better. Uh, COVID vaccine in kids, it does seem to be better than actual COVID. So I know it's a really new vaccine, but it's been out long enough that we're going to know already about any long-term side effects, and we aren't seeing any in children. So from what I'm seeing, it is safe to do the COVID vaccine for kids. And another thing they recommend for babies or for children less than five, because they can't get it yet, is what they call cocooning, where everyone around them gets the vaccine so that they're a lot less likely to be exposed to COVID. Um, a 15 month old only saying mama. So just check if they're saying any other things that might not be considered regular words, like if they wave high and by consistently or make a single sound for something that would count as a word. And usually somewhere between 15 and 18 months, they'll start adding a lot more words in. Um, in preschool with the babies that always want to be held or they cry, that's really hard. And that's something that you can kind of wean them down over time, like put them down for progressively longer amounts of time. But yeah, some, some children are really, really needy like that and they just really need to be held so much. 
the sleep regression is tough. Sleep is one of the hardest things in babies and getting them to fall asleep and stay asleep is really difficult. Some babies are just excellent sleepers and some are not. I had a really bad sleeper. So the things I tried um, were things you can try. You can try things like blackout blinds. You can try a noise machine if they tend to startle themselves awake. Uh, we we diffused some essential oils. We did chamomile essential oil, German chamomile, and that helped her. Mine did not respond well to lavender. Um, we did lavender lotion. It just wasn't helpful. It kind of made her more awake. Um, I took her to a pediatric acupuncturist because I was at my wit's end, and a chiropractor as well, a pediatric chiropractor. And pediatric chiropractors, they don't do twisting and popping. They just adjust with their little pinkies, you know, really gently and soft. And acupuncture in babies does not have any needles. So they're just like using laser pointers on the skin and kind of scratching on pressure points. And those two things are what really help my baby the most, I would say. But um, yeah, very long bedtime routine, big wind down, lots of snuggling and rocking and that sort of thing, singing. Um, but yeah, it it does get better. It always gets better over time. They always do sleep better. To some, it takes a lot longer than others. Uh, let's see. A baby that was born super early who's almost a year old and can help with her head. That is normal. Um, which foods to introduce? So the only thing you cannot give babies less than a year is honey because honey contains spores for botulism and those don't get killed by cooking. So even like honey Cheerios, um, honey graham crackers, honey ham, honey mustard, those are all not allowed in babies less than a year. And then the other thing is cups of cow's milk because cow's milk is filling but not terribly nutritious. It just is a good source of fat and calcium and that's it. And there's fat and calcium in just about any other kid food. So um, so yeah, babies less than a year, they can eat all of the foods except for honey and cow's milk. Um, and it's okay to have milk products like yogurt, cheese, butter, those are all totally fine. Uh, now they're starting to recommend giving any and all foods at all times. Um, we used to have a very specific way to introduce foods, and now they say it doesn't actually matter. All kids become picky eaters when they're about two years old. All kids around a year will eat just about everything. So yeah, just keep trying all the foods, all the variety is the best. 18 month old with four teeth is totally fine. Some kids don't even get any teeth until 18 months, but they should get their first tooth within the first year. Somewhere around 15 to 18 months, we might do x-rays, but as long as they've got a couple of teeth, they will come in, they'll keep coming in. Um, the dentist can do an x-ray to make sure that they're in there under the jaw about to come out. Coughing is one thing that is not normal in babies. So sneezing is normal, hiccups are normal, but coughing is not. And if it's a real cough, more than just like clearing their throat after they eat, then um, you wanna maybe see your doctor about that. You can, um, depending on how old they are, babies less than six months who are coughing, it's a little more serious. If they're over six months, you can probably manage at home, but definitely check with your pediatrician. Uh, let's see, yogurts, which yogurt's best? Any, any yogurts are good. I just like regular plain yogurt the best because it doesn't have sugar in it. And you can even mix in your own fruit if you want. For constipation in newborns, so if they're around a month old, that's where they go through a phase called discordant stooling. It usually happens between four and six weeks, and really it's like 44 to 46 weeks of gestation. So if they're born early, it might happen, you know, a little later, like when they're a little older. Um, but that's where they're learning to coordinate their muscles to poop. And so they'll like squeeze their bellies and then they'll squeeze their anal sphincter closed at the same time and build up all this pressure and they turn red and grunt and cry. And it looks really sad, but then when the poop comes out, it's normal. And they can go from pooping 14 times a day to like once a week overnight. And it can be really dramatic. And then you start having blowout poops. So that's normal around a month. If they're older than that, it could be formula or breast milk allergy related. So it, they could have like a dairy allergy or soy allergy. And if they're over six months old, it's probably food related. So they're probably getting too much food and too little water with that. Once they're over a year and constipated, try adding water first. One thing we recommend is Miralax. And Miralax is something that when you mix it with juice or water, uh, it just turns into kind of a gel in their intestines. It's like those Orbeez beads that you put in water and they puff up. And so it just causes this like mechanical thing to happen where it just flushes through their intestines. They don't absorb it at all. So it's totally safe to do Miralax and they won't get addicted to it either. Um, sleep training for 11 month old and crying. It's something that, it, so there's a lot of different feelings about this. I'm not a huge fan of letting them cry it out, but it does work in some babies. So it's uh, it's really up to like your family and what works best for you guys, but whatever you do consistently is what baby will get used to and will 
keep responding to. Um, the best formulas, I think, are the regular ones. So regular Enfamil or regular Similac. Um, I think it's called NeuroPro now, something like that. But flip it over and look at the ingredients because those ones, the first ingredient will be cow's milk solids. For things like Gentilese and um, all of the like sensitive tummy ones, the first ingredient is uh, corn syrup solids. And I am not a huge fan of starting corn syrup in little babies. Um, and corn syrup is easier on the stomach. It's a sugar. You know, it'll it'll digest a little easier and faster, but it's not as healthy as just giving them milk-based formulas. There's also Gerber ones. Um, I know the Holly formula is really popular. It's imported from Germany over here, and a lot of my patients like that. It's, for whatever reason, not FDA regulated. So just... Um, just double check on the box, make sure that it's got good ingredients in it. Uh, let's see. When six months old, when to, oh, moving babies into a bassinet. Um, so you should ideally start them in a crib or bassinet when they're first born. If they're in a bed in one of those things that like unfolds with the hard sides, like a co-sleeper it's called, those uh, you can move them into the bassinet whenever you're ready, somewhere around a month of age is usually when I suggest that. They should be swaddled for the first month or so. Once they start busting out, some babies will start busting out after like a week, and then you don't need to keep swaddling them anymore. But you can do a sleep sack, which will zip to their body, and then they, they can't roll around and get strangled by it, basically. Uh, no blankets in the bed or the bassinet with them. Always put them face up when you put them down. But yeah, it can be a bit of an adjustment for babies to go from sleeping with people in the room to sleeping on their own and it being quiet. Some babies love that. Some babies struggle with that. So um, a bassinet in your room can be really helpful if they're used to having that noise or people around. Uh, but if you want to try transitioning them early, you can do it really anytime. You can put them into a crib in their own room. Um, let's see. Sores on the baby's tongue. Should probably get that looked at. So it could be a sign of thrush. Thrush is usually white patches on the tongue. It looks kind of like milk, but um, it doesn't wipe off. So if you, if you think your baby might have thrush, you can try with a wet washcloth, see if it comes off. And um, yeah, that hopefully should go away. If it doesn't, then your doctor can do something called nystatin, which is an antifungal that they can give by mouth. Uh, it is common for babies to drop percentiles around four to six months when you start giving them solid foods, and then also as they start moving more. So if your baby just started rolling, or if they start crawling, um, that burns a lot more calories, and they can, they can sometimes drop weight a little bit and they should pick back up again. If they cross two major percentile lines, so if they were at the 50th, the next one down is 25 and the next one's 10. So if they go from the 50th to below the 10th, that's a red flag. Um, so two percentile lines, also if they jump above two percentile lines, so if it goes 50, 75, 90, if they go from 50 to above the 90th, that's also a red flag. But it's, it's usually pretty obvious and dramatic when that's happening and your pediatrician would notice that and they can give you advice about that. A blanket, you can start around one year of age. It's safe to let them sleep with a blanket. And then at age two, they can start with pillows. Um, yeah, just be extra careful around the four to six month phase with blankets because they are starting to roll. And we did have a patient once that was four months old that we lost because she was taking a nap with a blanket, rolled for the first time in her sleep, got the blanket wrapped around her head. So it's, it can be super dangerous with blankets. Um, so after one year, it is okay. Um, let's see, yes, brushing teeth and gums. So as soon as those teeth come out, you want to start brushing them twice a day with water, if you can remember. <laughs> um, I have a hard time remembering. <laughs> I know what that's like. So once or twice a day, at least, uh, with plain water, and then you can start fluoride. You can officially start fluoride once they're able to spit. So that's usually like a couple years old, two or three years old. But, um, if your, fluoride, if your water source doesn't have fluoride in it, or if they're not drinking a lot of water, you can use up to the size of a grain of rice of fluoride toothpaste on their toothbrush and brush it with that and let them swallow it, and then they get that fluoride in their body. A little bit of fluoride is actually healthy for babies. It helps form the enamel of their teeth. Uh, gripe water. Oh, congrats, new dad. Yes. Um, gripe water for hiccups and upset stomach. So hiccups are totally normal, and I know they look uncomfortable, but they go away on their own after usually a couple of months, sometimes just a few weeks. But gripe water is something, it's not FDA regulated, so just double check the ingredients. A lot of times it's just like chamomile and water, and that's okay. Um, some preparations might have alcohol in them, so make sure there's no alcohol in it. 
And it's something that you're just giving sparingly. It's not like a food source. We don't want them to get too much gripe water because then they might not eat enough milk or formula. So um, yeah, a little bit of gripe water is good. One of the best things for if they do have an upset stomach is probiotics. So probiotics are the one thing that are shown to help um, like in studies with colic. So any probiotic is good. Liquid ones are the ones for babies. You can get them, you know, in the refrigerated section. Ideally, those are definitely live cultures and just like they come with a little dropper and you can just drop them in their mouth. They usually make them taste pretty good so that the babies like them. <laughs> uh, let's see. So cough in a three month old or four month old. Um, so babies less than a year cannot have honey. There are two different kinds of Zarbi's cough syrup. There's one for babies one and up that contains honey. And then there's one for babies less than a year, the infant Zarbi's, and that has agave nectar in it. So yes, that is okay to give. Um, Zarbi's is also decently expensive. So if you wanted to just buy agave syrup, you can mix it with water and give that to baby with a spoon or, um, you know, just you're giving them like a teaspoon at a time. You can use a little baby syringe, do up to like two mls up to five mls if they need it um that can help with cough let's see alcohol based teething gels sorry that just ran away on me um yeah not generally a fan of giving alcohol to babies but things like aura gel can help it's just a local anesthetic it's topical you could also do something like tylenol or ibuprofen which does get into their whole body um, things that are cold, like a frozen washcloth is really great for babies to chew on. Just like soak it with plain water and let them chew on it. Or you can get those, there's these like teething things. They look kind of like pacifiers, but there'll be a bag on the end of it, either a mesh bag or a silicone like rubber bag. You could put some frozen fruits into that and let them chew on the frozen fruits. Um, the bag prevents it from coming out and from them choking on it, but then they also get that flavor and they get the nice cold feeling there. You can also freeze breast milk or formula in an ice cube tray and put it in those kind of things and let them chew on that too. Um, let's see. So pillows, you can use pillows when they are two years old. Uh, Aura gel is still okay to use, but it, um, if they get too much of it, it can cause problems. Like it, it does get into their bodies. So you only want to use it like every two to four hours at the most. With uh, rolling, rolling should start somewhere between four and six months of old, of age. Um, they'll typically roll front to back first if they're doing a lot of tummy time. They try to get themselves out of tummy time. Uh, you can start tummy time from birth, really, but around two weeks you want to start doing it twice a day, 15 to 30 minutes at a time. And then somewhere around six months of age, they'll start rolling the other way. Uh, See, so the swinging back and forth is something I would check with your doctor about that. Sometimes that's normal. Sometimes it could be a sign of autism or some other genetic conditions. So just double check with your doctor. Um, so it, can, it can be totally normal though. In terms of introducing cereal, uh, so you don't have to do cereal. It's okay to skip it entirely because it's just empty calories. But, um, but cereal is something you can start around four to six months of age when they're showing signs that they're ready to start eating. So when they're watching you eat, um, if you give them a spoon and they suck it in, and if uh, if they can hold their head up and they have good head control. Let's see. Oh yeah, when the cord falls off, it is normal to have this sticky, yucky stuff left behind, sometimes even a spot of blood. It kind of looks like someone like hocked a loogie onto your baby's belly. That's totally normal. Just wipe it off with plain water. Um, if it's still bleeding, like if it's dripping down the side of their, their body, you can take a cotton ball, press on it for about five minutes, take it off again. If it's still bleeding, call your doctor, but it almost never will bleed that long. And usually it's not even any blood, like once you wipe it in the first place. The transition from formula to whole milk is around a year of age. You don't have to do milk ever, actually. Kids don't actually need milk. Um, it's partly our society making you think that they really do. But it's okay to switch them just to water. Uh, but it is an option after a year of age to give them milk. It's an easy transition from formula because, you know, it's it's tasty, it's filling. You want to keep it below 24 ounces per day because if they drink more than that, they tend to get anemic. The calcium in the milk will compete with iron absorption in their stomach and also it fills them up and they don't eat as much food. So I've seen kids with pretty serious anemia from drinking too much milk. There are no downsides to not drinking milk. You can get calcium in so many other foods. It's in broccoli even, and it's in most kid foods are like fortified with calcium. And, and then milk's also a good source of fat and the fat is not lacking in any American diet. So <laughs> um, it's okay not to do milk at all. 
Uh, let's see. Speech delay from too much TV. <sighs> they say yes, it can. And then some kids actually pick up more words from watching TV. So the recommendation is less than two hours of TV or screen time per day for children less than two years old. Ideally, we want to keep screen time to things like FaceTime with grandparents and interactive stuff like that versus just putting something on in the background and letting them listen to it. But, um, yeah, it can, uh, you know, sometimes help and sometimes cause speech delay in babies. Um, let's see, with preemies, uh, so we give them a little extra time to catch up. Most preemies, like in the first year of life, we'll talk about their corrected age. And so it's like as if they had been born on time, like they really should only be two months old versus they're actually three months old. Um, they will typically catch up around two to two and a half years of age with their peers. And then from that point on, there's like no, no, you can't even tell that they were preemies anymore. So it's just in the first two years or so that we do their corrected age. Um, group B strep can be serious. It's something that we treat with antibiotics in labor to, to um, prevent the babies from getting it. Uh, you can start giving table foods to a six month old. That is okay. For cradle cap, my favorite is olive oil or Vaseline or Aquaphor on their scalp. So something really greasy like that. You could use coconut oil, but I feel like it soaks in really fast. It's not as effective as olive oil is. Um, tongue ties, there's a lot of debate on that. So if the baby's having trouble feeding, they're not gaining enough weight, or if mom's getting really painful, like blisters on your nipples, that can be reasons to get a tongue tie clipped. If baby sticks their tongue out and it doesn't go past their lips, then that needs to be fixed. Um, also if they stick their tongue out and you can see a W shape at the end, usually those will need to be fixed. Cheek ties and, um, the lip ties, like the frenulum up here and down here, usually don't need to be fixed. And the newest recommendation from the AAP is not to do anything with those. Sometimes after you clip tongue ties, lip ties, or cheek ties, the baby has to learn how to eat again, too. So it can sometimes make the feeding a little harder for them. But usually it helps in the long run. How to take baby out now that it's a pandemic. Um, also, even just like the winter anyway. Ideally, you don't want anyone coming too close to baby, people like reaching in to baby. Um, Nowadays, hopefully where you live, people are wearing masks, and so that actually does help a lot. But um, you can start taking baby out after they get their first round of vaccines, which is around two months of age. Breastfed babies are also more protected because when you're out with them, you're picking up all the germs in the environment. And you know, as you kiss them, you pick up any germs that are on their skin, and then you produce antibodies and they get it through the breast milk. So um, breastfed babies, I feel a little more comfortable with them going out in, into public than formula-fed babies. Formula-fed babies are a little more likely to catch colds and to get a little sick. Uh, you can use tap water for formula as long as it's clean in the area that you leave you live. <laughs> um, you don't necessarily have to do bottled water for them. Um, the babies at a year looking for their bottle when they wake up. So if they're on milk or formula, you can start watering it down at a year. And I suggest doing like three quarters milk, one quarter water, and then you go to half and half water and formula or milk, and then three quarters water, and then finally all water. And once you get to an all water bottle at night, usually it's not worth it to them to wake up for it. So it's kind of a gentle way to, to wean them off. Oh, thanks, Scarlett. I'm glad you liked my book. That's so cool. Um, to make the infants more comfortable with COVID. So Tylenol and ibuprofen can definitely help. Ibuprofen, you can start at six months of age and up. If they're less than six months, then Tylenol only. And also just bulb sucking, humidified air. You can use Vicks on their chest and on their feet or eucalyptus oil or peppermint oil. Um, those are all things that can help a little bit if they have COVID or other uh, you know, symptoms of upper respiratory infection. Tooth question. So tooth germination, usually it starts around six months of age, but can happen any time in the first year. I have a good friend whose baby was born with a tooth and got a second one at two weeks of age. So poor thing, she was breastfeeding. But um, yeah, so teeth, typically what happens is the first two are these two incisors on the bottom, then the two on the top, the two central incisors, then the two lateral incisors. So they'll have four on the top, two on the bottom, and then the next two are the, the two laterals here then they get the molars and then they fill in in between. But that can happen in any order. It's okay for them to get two or three teeth at a time or four teeth or six teeth at a time. Um, sometimes they come out of order and that's totally fine too. But for the pain, you can do Tylenol, ibuprofen, you can do frozen things that they can chew on, um, breast milk popsicles, things like that can really help. Teething toys are great, like the silicone ones. I love the uh, banana toothbrush for mine. That was like really squishy and soft as a silicone thing. But yeah, any 
any kind of teething toys can help. For bigger kids when they're teething, like toddlers, you can do things like beef jerky, dried mango, stuff that's like really chewy so that they can bite on that. Um, flathead, if it's on the back of their head, typically will go away on its own after time because it's it's called p- p- bleh, positional plagiocephaly, um, and it's from laying on their the back of their head. So doing tummy time can help with that, but then also as they grow up, it tends to go away. Being flat on the side of the head can sometimes be a red flag. It could be a sign that they have torticollis, which is a tight muscle pulling their head to one side, um, or very rarely could be a sign of something like a stroke that happened when they were inside of you. So if a baby has a flat head on the side of the head, get them checked out by your doctor and ask about that. A uh, three-month-old with a curved spine when sitting is totally normal. They usually can't sit themselves up until somewhere between six and nine months. At six months, they'll tripod typically, and then at nine months, they can sit all the way up. Eczema, um, so bathing them once or twice a week, uh, not too often because they can get more dried out. And then after the bath, just cover them in lotion, something really greasy. Um, you can do ointment, so something like Aquaphor or Vaseline is awesome after a bath because that kind of seals in the water. And then a gentle, unscented lotion in between. You could even do Aquaphor up to five times a day. I just keep it by the changing table. And then, you know, each time just kind of feel over my baby. If there's any slightly rough patches, I'll put some on that. And that usually helps it to go away. Once it gets really bad, um, talk to your doctor about that. But you can start doing something like a hydrocortisone cream. They might recommend bleach baths, which sounds crazy. But it's really just like a tablespoon of bleach in the baby bath. And that can sterilize the skin. Because sometimes eczema gets colonized by yeast or bacteria. And when that happens, it just keeps flaring and flaring and flaring. So something like that once once a week, um, a bath with, bath with a tiny bit of bleach in it can help sterilize their skin. Also, vinegar is antifungal. So you can put vinegar in the bath too. And that can, that can help if they've got like ringworm or colonized eczema. Uh, one month old with acne on face and head is totally normal. They, baby acne is one of those sort of sad cosmetic things that you just want them to have nice baby skin for their pictures. But um, it doesn't really bother them and it does go away over time. It's related to hormones from being inside of you and then being outside of you. So it will go away. You don't want to use any adult products on baby skin because they can get really dried out from that. Um, How long to digest food? So usually typical transit time in the intestines is 12 to 24 hours. So uh, sometimes it's quicker um, and sometimes longer than that. But yeah, if you notice something in your baby's diaper, just think over the last day. Have they had something like that in the last day that could look like that? One of the weirdest looking diapers I saw was this like white crumbly stuff all in there it turned out to be tater tots so yeah you can get really weird stuff in their diapers sometimes and then a few things that have ended up in the er that i've seen watermelon um babies who eat a but like watermelon's delicious right and they'll eat a whole bunch of it and it like it dehydrates in their stomach and it turns into these red strings and it looks like blood it looks just like blood in the diaper so watermelon can be scary also tomatoes i've seen a baby after their first lasagna <laughs> end up in the er because they thought it was blood um, and beets. Beets are something that will turn the whole poop reddish, purple, and sometimes pinkish, but like it, it can look like blood also. Not crawling at eight months is totally okay. Uh, typically nine months is when they start crawling, but really any time in the first year is okay and not delayed yet. Um, a baby with lips and fingers turning blue sometimes could be that they're cold. So hands and feet can sometimes turn blue and that can be totally normal. But when their lips are starting to turn blue, if they're getting blue around their mouth or tip of their nose, that could be a sign that they're not getting enough oxygen. So if that's happening, you want to take them into your doctor right away. For colic, there's a couple of things you can try. Probiotics are the only thing evidence-based that you can give them by mouth that truly will help. You can try gripe water. Um, Sometimes helps, sometimes not. And things like bicycle legs or up and downs with the legs where you kind of like almost like backwards sit-ups but with their legs can help relieve that gas. Putting them on their belly with their knees tucked under, you know, their butt kind of up in the air can help the gas to come out. And then a belly massage in a clockwise direction can help with that. Um, Ibuprofen for teething. It's okay to give it a few times a day, um, even for several days in a row. I wouldn't do it longer than like two weeks. Um, They can start to wear down their stomach lining. But it is okay to keep giving it, or you can also alternate, like give ibuprofen once and then Tylenol once see if that helps but yeah teething can go on for a really long time so it's I would mostly give it like if they're having trouble sleeping or trouble eating that can help 
with the baby's head shape. Check with your doctor about that. They should be measuring your baby's head at every visit until they're three years old to make sure it's growing enough. And as long as it's growing okay, it should be fine. But if you notice like areas of the skull bulging out, sometimes it means that the sutures between the bones are fusing too early. And sometimes they need to see a specialist for that, like a neurologist. Um, let's see, food allergies. So that's something that babies are more likely to have food allergies if anyone in the family has an allergy to anything, even environmental like cats or pollen or um, eczema or asthma. And they aren't necessarily going to be allergic to the same things that their parents are allergic to. So allergies are kind of funny like that, and they're just more at risk of getting some allergies, but you don't necessarily know what it's going to be too. So they're starting to recommend doing the top eight allergens early on, and those are um, peanuts, nuts, fish, shellfish, milk, or you know dairy products, you can give plain milk to a baby, soy, eggs, and wheat. And as long as you introduce all of those things um, somewhere, you know, if they're high risk for allergy, they actually recommend starting introducing peanuts at four months of age. And the way you do that is you just dip your finger in peanut butter, the tiniest amount, and put it in their mouth and see how they do. If they break out in a rash, they're allergic, don't give them any more. Um, but then for other things, you can kind of mix them in with foods. You can also mix peanut butter in with like applesauce. It's delicious. Uh, sinus infection from a tooth cavity usually does not happen, but very rarely can. It can because um, your sinuses are just above your your teeth. Uh, let's see. If your baby is born early, things to be careful of. So mostly infection. If anybody's sick, even with a tiny mild cold, younger babies, especially preemie babies, are more likely to have trouble breathing and need oxygen for that. So just to keep them protected from sick people. If you are sick and you're breastfeeding, you can just put a mask on so you're not coughing or sneezing directly onto your baby and then still breastfeed because you're producing all of the antibodies that your baby needs. 10 month old having trouble with yeah diaper changes and clothing changes. I would do 3D diaper changes at that age, like I'd let them stand up and kind of work with them. Sometimes they just want to flip over. Um, when they're learning to roll and crawl and walk, it's really hard for them to be laid down on their back. They hate that, they're like offended, you know? I'm trying to work on my skills. So yeah, let them move around if you can. If you can do it backwards, it's fine. <laughs> um, they're upside down. Uh, also, if they're breastfeeding, I would just pop a boob in their mouth. Usually that will keep them distracted and happy long enough to change their diaper. Also, that works for brushing their hair and trimming their nails. You can just give them a boob and they get really distracted by that. Or, or a bottle. Um, let's see. Baby with congestion at seven weeks is unfortunately very normal because, uh, you know, babies, they have these tiny little noses and they're producing boogers constantly just like we are but they can't blow their nose and they don't know how to pick their boogies yet so like like bigger kids right um so saline drops can help moisturize their nose and you can use bulb suckers to suck it out uh i i do it like every diaper change with my kid um you know just every two hours or so you can't overdo it with the saline and i live in a really dry climate too so we really needed it that often um, instead of Nutramagen, there are other options. There's one called Alimentum, which um, I believe Nutramagen is Enfamil brand and Alimentum is Similac brand. So I, may, I might have those backwards, but yeah. Nutramagen and Alimentum are both hydrolyzed formulas. And there's also one called Pure Amino, um, which is a newer one. And I think Gerber even makes one. So any hydrolyzed formula is okay. Um, just make sure it is that hydrolyzed or partially digested. It has the, the proteins broken down so they don't react to it. Um, vomiting after eggs is usually a sign of allergy actually so I would hold off on those and then somewhere around one one and a half you can try again with the eggs um, sometimes babies will throw up even with something made with eggs like pancakes so uh, just kind of feel it out with your baby but yeah if it's straight eggs and they're making them vomit that's usually an allergy to eggs um, I don't know much about carpal tunnel in pregnancy since I'm a pediatrician, but I, I know that your body does get a lot of swelling all over the place and that that can make it worse because your carpal tunnel is a tight space and any swelling in there will, will put more pressure and make it hurt more. The best formula I say is anything milk-based. So um, just flip it over, look at the ingredients, and if cow's milk is one of the first ingredients, then that's great. If corn syrup solids are the first ingredient, I'm not a huge fan of that, um, but that will help with tummy troubles. So if they're if they're real colicky, sometimes the um, something like Gentilys is is a corn syrup based, and then also hydrolyzed formulas are great. 
um, let's see, yeah, mucusy coughs, so things like bulb sucking, uh, humidified air can help with that. The ear touching is sometimes due to wax in the ear, sometimes they're itchy, sometimes it's tooth pain, and they're like, ow, something hurts, oh, I found an ear, that's really soft and squishy, and then they play with it. And sometimes it's a sign of ear infection, but pretty rarely. And if it is a sign of ear infection, they're more likely to be holding it, crying, and also have a fever. A 20-month-old with biting, so I would suggest something like um, like fruit leather, like something hard from their bite on, or dried mangoes, or uh, beef jerky, something really chewy like that. Hand them things that it's okay to bite. At 20 months, they're probably getting their next set of molars in. So... Um, they they usually do want to like chew on stuff that's really hard that age also teething toys are excellent if they'll if they'll take those um let's see so yeah babies with covid and respiratory infections it's all sort of the same treatment so humidified air bulb suction saline drops uh you can do things like vicks on their chest and feet or eucalyptus oil peppermint oil um for babies over a year, it's okay to give them honey for cough. Babies less than a year cannot have honey. They can do agave for cough. Agave nectar is safe to give to babies less than a year. You can mix it with water or just give you know tiny amounts of it on a spoon, and that's okay to do. Berries at six months, I think, are great. Yeah, you totally can. In my experience, strawberries in kids. Um, so if your kid eats a whole bunch of strawberries and get a rash, a lot of times it's just like a you know citric acid kind of thing. Um, it doesn't necessarily mean they're allergic to it, but that's the only one I, I really see problems with. Um, all other berries should be fine. Um, let's see, sterilizing bottles. I honestly never sterilized bottles. I would run them through the dishwasher um, or just wash them as long as they're not smelly. It's okay, but yeah, they, you don't necessarily have to sterilize them unless you're in a place that has water that's not um, safe for drinking. Oh, grunting can be a sign of respiratory distress, and sometimes when they're older, like an eight-month-old, it could be normal. So if it's with every breath, if they're like, <laughs> then you'd want to bring them in to see their doctor. That's a sign that they're having trouble keeping their lungs open. With milk allergies, so if it's a true allergy, if they have blood in their stools um, or they're vomiting profusely after eating, you want to switch to a hydrolyzed formula. There is an option of soy formula, but most babies who are allergic to milk will also cross-react with soy, and it doesn't make them any better and can make them worse. So typically we just go straight from regular formula to hydrolyzed formula, and the hydrolyzed formulas are Nutramagen, Alimentum, Puramino, or the brands that I know of, and I think there are others as well. Um, paracetamol, yes, is okay for teething. That's the British version of Tylenol or acetaminophen that is totally okay to give babies. You can give it every four hours as needed for a couple of days at a time even. Uh, babies can have sleep apnea if their tonsils and adenoids are too big. So if you're worried about it, check with your doctor. But babies also do something called periodic breathing. So when they're really little, they'll breathe fast for a little bit and then slow for a little bit. And it can be kind of scary to see. Um, sometimes they'll do this <laughs> kind of like breath in. That's okay. That's totally normal. Um, cow's based formula. I'm a big fan of the cow's milk based formula. I'm not sure about those lawsuits, what that could be. Um, goat's milk based formula, just double check on the back that they added folic acid because goat's milk can cause a folic acid deficiency in babies, which causes anemia. But as long as it's got folate or folic acid in it, it should be fine. Um, a seven month old who's constipated is likely to be due to foods and needing more water. So you can start giving water after six months of age. They can start to regulate a little better and after a year they can have all the water they want. But um, they can, yeah, you can start with a little water if they're constipated, if their poops are coming out hard like little pellets. The baby with flat head and not liking carrier and tummy time. So keep trying with the tummy time. Most babies hate tummy time and that's kind of their, you're their personal trainer. That's like their exercise that they get is tummy time, pushing themselves up and, um, you know, and wiggling and trying to get out of it. But uh, flatheads that are on the back of the head all go away, pretty much all go away over time. If it's super flat, check with your doctor to make sure that there's not any like fusing of the, of the skull bones too early. Melatonin, I'm not a huge fan of in children because they do become dependent on it. So if you need to give it, it's okay to give it, um, I'd say at the earliest age, probably a year. But just double check with your doctor and only give it for like, you know, up to two or three days. After that, they'll become addicted to it and not be able to sleep without it. Baby six months and up with vitamins. So if they're getting greens every day, 
then I typically don't think they need vitamins. But um, sometimes we start babies on vitamins around six months, and the vitamins that we usually give are iron and vitamin A, C, and D. But yeah, if they're eating a variety of foods, then I would definitely just keep giving them lots of different foods. Um, the, the vitamins you get out of fruit and vegetables are more bioavailable, so they get in your body easier, and they're healthier than the ones that are, you know, the chemical vitamins. Um, a baby who threw up 10 to 12 times in an hour is not normal and should go to, probably to the emergency room. Sorry. Um, let's see. Stop giving a, a breastfed baby vitamin D. So it's kind of funny. Now vitamin D is like the new hot vitamin. They want every, pe every person of all ages to have 400 units per day of vitamin D. Uh, it takes about 20 minutes of whole body sun exposure to give you your daily vitamin D vitamin D. So in the middle of summer, kids going out in like swimsuits and stuff usually don't need extra vitamin D. But um, yeah, they recommend basically giving it their whole life. Um, it's anti-inflammatory and helps build strong bones. A baby four month old pooping once a day. Yes, that's awesome. That's normal. And, and you're lucky that they're not pooping all the time. <laughs> it's kind of nice. Um, reflux with tummy time. Yeah, that can be hard. And so if you keep them upright for 20 to 30 minutes after eating and then do the tummy time, that can help. You know, use gravity. Sometimes you even have to wait an hour um, or do the tummy time right before he's about to eat. And then, you know, when his tummy's the emptiest, you're less likely to throw up during that. But you can start tummy time anytime, like even from birth, just start on your chest, you know, lean back with the baby and then they lift their head up and that's working their neck muscles. That's the idea of, of tummy time at the beginning. Um, but official tummy time, putting them down on the floor in a blanket, somewhere around two weeks of age, you can start doing that. Make sure you're watching the whole time so that they don't end up flat on their face and suffocating. You want to be watching them closely, but yeah, 15 to 30 minutes at a time is generally what's recommended for that. It is okay to start earlier than two weeks. Yeah. Um, so yeah, dry skin and eczema. So you want, you don't want to bathe too often. Just once or twice a week is usually enough. Really, just whenever they get smelly, you can wash them. And then after a bath, give them lots of moisturizing ointment. So like Vaseline, Aquaphor. You can do olive oil. I don't love coconut oil. I find that kids get more dry from that. It soaks in really fast, and then they get drier. And coconut oil is a little bit acidic, so sometimes it can make eczema worse. But um, all of those baby balms, all the eczema creams are pretty good. They're usually all unscented. The natural ones that are like calendula based or beeswax based, I found them not to work as well as the petroleum based ones like Aquaphor and Vaseline, but they are also an option. Um, vomiting multiple times after avocado is probably an allergy and avocados in the same family as bananas and latex. So I would just also keep an eye out for those things. Be extra careful that they're not allergic to those. Um, th where latex usually shows up is in balloons. So <laughs> birthday parties, I'd just be careful if they get like a rash after, you know, playing with a balloon. Um, teething. So yeah, frozen stuff, cold stuff can help. Frozen washcloths are great to chew on. Teething toys that are silicone. Awesome. Um, a baby who's screaming when pooping is likely to be constipated. So um, if it's been happening since they were two months old, that's that's pretty young. I would double check with your doctor to make sure they don't need any like x-rays or anything else done. But if they're older kids and chronically constipated, usually water is the first thing we add and then we can do Miralax after that, which is a medicine that doesn't get absorbed and they don't get addicted to it. Um, let's see. After a year, so someone said 16 ounces of milk after a year, they can actually have up to 24 ounces per day of milk. Anything more than that, they're likely to get anemic from, from the milk because they fill up on it and it competes with iron for absorption in the gut. So um, yeah, and milk is totally optional. You can just do water. After a year of age, you don't ever have to give them cow's milk. Uh, actually, I see a lot of GI stuff in kids after starting cow's milk too, like either constipation or diarrhea or both alternating with that. Um, toast for bread. Yeah, you could do toast. You could also just do like regular bread. Um, they, you know, you can, if you're worried about choking, you can tear it into small pieces, about a centimeter or half inch and, uh, you know, let them put that in their mouth and those kind of get like soft and, and gummy. Um, they also make these teething crackers here that I really love. They're, those are rice flour based usually though. Um, but those just like melt in your mouth and that's a good way to get them kind of chewing on that. Um, let's see. Water. Excellent. Uh, so with water, I do about one ounce of water for each ounce of baby food that you're giving them. Um, when should solids be introduced? So 
in the U.S., we recommend between four and six months of age. In Europe, they say six months and up because they, they say the gut's not fully formed yet and they're more likely to get allergies. But in the U.S., they're saying four months if you're worried about allergies. So there's, you know, the jury's still a little out on that. But signs that they're ready is that they'll start watching you eat. They'll watch that spoon go back and forth and, like, try to go for it. And then if they can hold their head up when they're seated, like, in a high chair or sitting with support, like, in a bumbo or something like that. And then if you give them a spoon and they suck it in instead of pushing it out with their tongue, that's a sign that they're ready to start eating. Um, let's see. Dark circles under the eyes of a five-year-old. Likely to be allergies is what I most commonly see. So um, it could be something low-grade environmental. If you've got any pets, you could have them skin tested to see if they react to things like cats and dogs. Sometimes it's pollen, grasses, trees, sometimes it's dust. Um, but usually it's sort of a low-grade environmental allergy for something like that. Uh, numbing cream before vaccines doesn't help a whole lot. Uh, the vaccine, because it's going under the skin into the muscle and then being diffused in there, like that's really where the pain comes from. The numbing cream only helps with the needle going in. So I use a thing called a shot blocker, which is a little piece of plastic. It has these pokey things on it and it tricks your skin so you don't feel the needle. But also if you squeeze nice and hard with that, it also tricks their muscle even to not feeling it. So I, I've seen really good results with that. I've had babies sleep through their shots with the shot blocker. That's something that, um, a lot of offices don't have though. So you can buy them on Amazon. They're about five bucks a piece. You can get a five pack for $25, I think is what they have right now. So it's, you know, it's kind of a lot. You only need one of them, but like if you got a couple friends to share with, or if you can find a single one, I love the shop blocker, um, over numbing cream at least. Oh yeah. Baby throwing up t 10 to 12 times per hour since birth. That's a real lot. Um, if it's just tiny amounts spitting up, it's probably reflux. Yeah, I think I would double check with the with your doctor on that. I don't I don't know about propolis for toddlers. I don't know if you want to remind me. Is that is that the um, bee pollen thing? I think that can help with allergies. Let's see how often to bathe a newborn. So like once or twice a week, or just whenever they smell. Babies usually smell good most of the time. Um, they don't get sweaty and gross like adults do. So just when they smell bad, if they're spitting up a lot and getting like a lot of milk on them, sometimes that can make them smell bad. But if they spit up and you wipe them with, um, you know, like a wet washcloth, that can help a lot. Babies with reflux are yeah, it is really hard. Um, so reflux. It, well, all babies have reflux, actually, until the first tw 6 to 12 months when their lower esophageal sphincter develops. So the, that sphincter goes between the esophagus and the stomach, and that's what keeps food in the stomach after we eat. And that's why you can, like, drink upside down, you know, drink water upside down, and it stays in. But when they're babies, it doesn't. And so it's kind of like, you know, like a McDonald's cup with a straw in it, and you tip it sideways, some stuff's going to come out. So um, one thing you can do is use gravity. Keep them upright after feeding. You know, keep the baby on your shoulder and use gravity to help that go down. Also, there's anti-reflux formula. So Enfamil AR has added rice starch in it. And the rice starch, when it hits the stomach acid, it turns into like this thickening agent. So it kind of turns into cottage cheese in their stomach as soon as it hits their stomach. And that can really help to keep it down. I love Enfamil AR. We even gave it to preemies in the NICU. So um, that's a great option. And there's also thickening agents you can add to formula. I would not put rice cereal in with the formula. You can do up to one teaspoon per two ounces of rice, like one teaspoon of rice cereal per two ounces of formula to thicken it. But anything more than that um, is not is not good for them. It gets too thick. It's too hard for them to suck down and uh, it can interfere with, with feeding later on. Let's see, lots of rashes sometimes could be eczema, um, could be, there, there are some pediatric illnesses that come with rashes, so if they're having a little bit of low-grade fever, it could be a virus that's causing that too. How many ounces for a three-month-old baby during the day? So 24 to 30 ounces is pretty typical. Um, somewhere between two weeks and a month of age, they'll get up to that volume, and they stay at that volume up until a year, until the 24 to 30 ounces. It's just starting at six months, you're starting to add foods in on top of it, but yeah, about 24 to 30 ounces per day for a three-month-old, all the way up to a year. Oh my gosh, triplets that just turned 20, that is so cool. I love triplets, I love multiples, they're so awesome. Um, 
<laughs> a son crawling with his feet in the air. That is that is normal. It's funny, actually, all kinds of crawling, any kind of moving across the floor using your arms and legs counts as crawling. So scooting, like crab walking or doing this like kind of monkey crawl, those are all totally fine. Um, the army crawl where they're like kind of swimming on dry land, that's also, they all count as crawling. And so as long as your baby does any of those before walking, it's going to help their development. So any kind of moving across the floor is okay. Um, once babies start rolling, sometimes they'll roll themselves across the floor. That one doesn't count as crawling, so you could, but unfortunately. But yeah, anything using their arms and legs to get across the floor can count. A baby crying and wanting to be held all the time, unfortunately, is normal. If you think about it, they're used to being on the inside where it's warm all of the time and they're being compressed from all sides and held really tightly. So um, newborns usually do want to be held and also you're constantly moving and so babies used to being moved all the time so when you set them down in something that's still it can be oh yeah because my phone is about to die i think we could do about five more minutes um okay feeding baby solids throughout the day so i suggest whenever is most convenient for you so typically that's at meal times so like breakfast lunch dinner if you're able to sit down and eat and then also give baby a little bit of food at the same time in a high chair that can be an easy time to do it um, two or three times a day offering food is plenty when they're five months old somewhere around nine months um, you want to do consistently three times a day and then by a year of age they should be doing three meals and two snacks uh, in addition to just nursing or having formula throughout the day whenever um, they seem to be hungry. So when you're doing foods, I would suggest doing like a few bites of regular food first and then topping it up with formula or breast milk because um, then they, they get that practice of eating. But eating is like the only exercise babies get really. So eating and crying <laughs> and then, you know, moving a tiny bit. But um, yeah, eating can burn a lot of calories. So getting them to eat their solids and then fill them up with the liquids afterwards a good way to go um let's see warming up formula and milk so really it just has to be like not ice cold not directly out of the fridge and it's okay to give them cold milk and formula too it just um it tends to upset their stomachs if you do that so yeah even just like room temperature is fine we would just run the bottles like if the bottle uh, was in the fridge we would just run it under hot water for a couple of minutes and kind of shake it under the hot water to get it warmed up but you don't have to boil it you don't have to make it super hot it doesn't have to be body temp either just like anything more than the nice cold is good um, to help your six month old learn to get up from crawling position actually I would just let them do it on their own that's something that, you know, helping with motor milestones doesn't seem to really give them any advantage later in life. So babies that walk earlier are not going to be professional athletes or anything, or the converse is not true either. So um, moving earlier, there's no advantage, and there are many disadvantages, like they can fall downstairs and get themselves into trouble and stuff. So... Um, yeah, just let them figure it out on their own. One way you can inspire them to move more is like put their toys across the room or not not like all the way across, but like farther away so that they have to kind of move over to get it. But yeah. Um, let's see. Rosy cheeks that are dry and textured are probably eczema. So something really greasy on that, like Aquaphor or Vaseline is really good. Think about like chapstick, you know, how it's real greasy. So like something like that on the on their cheeks can really help. Uh, with stage two baby food, once they're doing great with purees consistently, um, you can start with stage two somewhere around seven, eight months. You should be ready for that. Um, let's see, babies that are not sleeping very well, you can sometimes try noise machines, like a white noise machine, or um, keep a fan running, you know, not, not pointed at them, but just like in the room for the noise. Uh, blackout curtains can sometimes help. We used chamomile oil in a diffuser, German chamomile, that helped my daughter sleep a little bit better, I felt like. Um, but yeah, it's, baby sleep is one of the hardest things <laughs> to get them to do if they don't want to sleep. Um, pregnant and with a UTI, I would get that treated actually, because that can potentially crawl up into your kidneys and then get into your bloodstream. It could be really dangerous. So um, most UTIs don't go away on their own without antibiotics. With baby led weaning, it's great. It's one of the two options. So you can either do purees, the traditional like purees to, you know, chunky solids to full solids, or baby led is giving them foods that they can just kind of nom on with their hands and they're not going to bite chunks off of and choke on. I always recommend people doing CPR classes like newborn CPR. I think honestly all parents should do it, you know, because any kid could choke at any time and it's really just a good skill to know. But, um, yeah, with baby lead weaning especially, I'd say it's, it's a little more important to do um, 
to do an infant CPR class, and both parents should take it because you never know who's going to be around, right? And any caretakers, actually, if you've got um, a babysitter or a nanny, grandparents, it's good for everybody to do infant CPR. It's super quick, easy. It's like 25 bucks, I think, for the class. Um, let's see. At what age to let the baby sleep alone? So current recommendation by the AAP is that they sleep in their own bed or bassinet in like in a crib or a bassinet in the same room as the parents up until a year of age but they're starting to show in studies that if you move them into their own room at four months of age they'll actually sleep more soundly by the time that they're 9 12 um, 18 months and even up to three years so it seems like moving them on a little bit earlier tends to help them sleep a little bit better but because of we don't know if that still will keep the um, the levels of SIDS low. So the current recommendation is keep them in your room in their own bed up to a year. Uh, breastfed babies being overfed, it's kind of funny. They say you can't really overfeed a breastfed baby because <laughs> they have to work to suck it out. With a formula fed baby, you absolutely can overfeed them because the formula can just like drip into their mouth out of the bottle if they have a regular flow nipple. And signs of overfeeding are that they're vomiting right after they eat. But yeah, with a breastfed baby, if they spit up a whole bunch after eating, like maybe they did eat a little too fast, um, sometimes you just have to burp them more often and give them a couple seconds to feel full. You know, like Thanksgiving, if you eat too much, and then a little bit later you're like, oh, why did I eat so much? My stomach hurts. So babies will do that too. They, it takes them a few minutes to realize that their tummy is full. So if you pop them off every so often, burp them, give them a couple seconds. If they're still rooting around looking for food, it's okay to pop them back on. And if they're just kind of sucking in the air, sometimes they just, babies just like to suck to, to soothe themselves. So it's okay to give them a pacifier after eating. If it makes them happy, that's great. That's all they wanted. If they suck on it and they get mad and they spit it out, they actually wanted to eat some more and it's okay to feed them a little bit more. But yeah, so in terms of like starting to self-soothe, you can really do that anytime from birth. And it's okay to do pacifiers from birth. We even do pacifiers in the NICU with the preemies. So um, pacifiers can help decrease the incidence of SIDS. And I'm a big fan of pacifiers, at least for the first six months of life. Um, and then you can kind of stop them anytime after that. If your baby doesn't like pacifiers, that's okay too. Um, yeah, COVID when you're pregnant can actually give antibodies to the baby and can help protect the baby a little bit. And then as you're breastfeeding baby too, they're getting those antibodies that can help pr protect them as well. Uh, weaning nursing at a year. That <laughs> So yes, that, I get that question a lot because um, the AAP says breastfeed them up to a year and then you, that's it. That's the end of the recommendations. So it can be really hard to stop breastfeeding a toddler. I actually wrote a book. It's called Bye Bye Boobies. It's on Amazon. Um, it's just like a coloring book. I think I, I do have a copy here. I colored it myself or, uh, with my daughter. But um, you can do something like that or, you know, just talk to your kid about it. Really, once you decide that you are done with breastfeeding, like definitely done, you can start sleeping um, with a bra on or a tight tank top so that baby can't get to your boobs at night. And, um, and then just be like really firm about it when they're asking for it. And you can do that anytime after a year. I breastfed my little girl until she was four. So I'm, I'm a big fan of extended breastfeeding, but yeah, it does get harder the older they get because then they start to really throw tantrums. And then you realize too, like boobs are the one thing that fixes everything. You know, if they, if they get hurt, if they're scared, they're crying for any reason, you just like give them a boob and they're happy. So it's, it's like, what am I going to do now, now that she's sad? So, yeah, just like comforting them otherwise, holding them, hugging them. And, you know, if they if they seem to be thirsty or hungry, you can try giving them like a little water or a small snack over a year. See if that helps. Um, gassy babies. Yes, super, super common. So you can do things like up and downs with the legs or bicycle legs or tummy rubs. Those can all help. It's okay to do gripe water. Probiotics will help. Um, with the gripe water, just double check the ingredients to make sure that it's really safe for babies. Uh, 20 week anatomy scan. Congrats. Um, make sure you pee before they do, <laughs> they do it because they're going to be pressing on your belly a lot. Uh, but yeah, they're, they'll tell you if there's anything going on with the baby in there. 18 months and still nursing. I love it. It's awesome. Um, which foods to introduce to a four-month-old? So uh, somewhere between four and six when you start, four and six months, um, starting introducing foods. You could do, any, oh, sorry, what would make ripe water not safe? Alcohol. If there's alcohol in it, I wouldn't do it. Um, 
but yeah, that's that's about the only thing. So yeah, four to six months. You can start any foods in any order that you want. You don't have to do rice cereal or oat cereal. Those are totally optional, but you can do them. They're nice because it's just like a texture thing. You know, it thickens breast milk or formula. Um, but I like to start with the greens first. So a spinach, um, you can even make like Brussels sprouts, like steam them and, and blend them up. Uh, basically foods that are traditionally like kind of gross to babies or like the dark green things, collard greens, kale, these are excellent sources of nutrition and not as tasty as things like fruits. So I like to start with the greens first, then go to the orange vegetables. So that's like sweet potatoes, pumpkin, um, the squashes. Those are all a little sweeter than the greens and taste a little bit better. And then after that, do the fruits. And I don't even like to do fruits straight because they're so sweet, especially the baby foods like the Gerber apples and bananas and stuff. They're delicious, but they're very sweet. So you can mix those even with like peas and you know, make the peas taste a little bit better. And then they're getting like not as much sugar at a time. But according to the Academy of Pediatrics, it does not matter which foods you do in which order. Um, all kids will eat pretty much everything at a year to year and a half of age. And then pretty much all kids will become picky eaters after that for about two years where they only eat five foods. And that's pretty normal. So um, when you're starting with the foods, I'd say take advantage of their palate being immature and give them all of the things that you know are super healthy that you think they might not like and keep trying it. You want to do one food at a time for three to four days to see if they're going to get a rash from it. If they don't get a rash, you can add another food on, another new food, and then another new food. So, um, it, yeah, and if they do get a rash, you have to cut it out. If you give them something that has like three things in it and, you know, and then they get a rash, you don't know what caused it, you have to cut out all of those things. I'm a big fan of making your own baby food, yes, instead of buying the food that's in jars. Um, the food in jars just has preservatives in it, and if you make it yourself, you know, steam veggies, blend them up. You don't have to put salt in. Babies can't regulate salt water balance very well until six months, So, um, and even after that, like up to a year, their kidneys are still immature. So uh, don't add salt in, just steam, steam them with the veggies and blend them and give them to the babies, or, or mush them with a fork if you can give them to them and they can like pick them up and eat it, I love that. Yeah. Oh, yeah, so with the food allergens, you want to start those earlier on. They're showing that babies that are high risk for food allergies, like babies that are covered in eczema or have a very strong family history of allergies, asthma, and eczema, you want to start things like peanuts earlier than later. If you're breastfeeding and eating peanuts, babies are getting all those proteins, so that's great. Um, but if you're allergic to it, you know, maybe have your, your spouse or someone else try it. They can, you can just dip a finger in peanut butter and put it in baby's mouth. If they get a rash, stop with the peanut butter, don't give it again, talk to your doctor. Um, but yeah, with baby lead weaning, I'm, I'm a fan, just also, I, I suggest that everybody, all parents, even if you're not doing baby lead, should take a CPR class just in case they do choke at some point. Um, ugh, the doctor's being asked to leave without the vaccine, that is something that's super unfortunate and yeah, even in, you know, when I work in hospitals, like what they used to do with flu season was you you can get a flu shot or you can not get a flu shot and wear a mask the whole season. Well, now everyone's wearing masks all the time anyways. So my personal opinion is that it's stupid to ask people not to uh, work when they are not vaccinated because they have to wear a mask anyway. They should just do that. Like there are, the vaccine is one of many ways to prevent COVID. There are many other ways like washing your hands, wearing a mask, staying far away from people, not hanging out with too many people for too long, that sort of thing. Benadryl for allergies is an option. Um, check with your doctor before giving it. You don't want to give it to babies who are too young. In less than a year, you want to double check on the dosing, but it should be the same volume as Tylenol or children's ibuprofen. Infant ibuprofen is twice as concentrated, but the Benadryl, children's, children's Benadryl, children's ibuprofen, and children's and infants Tylenol or acetaminophen are all concentrated out in such a way that you give the same volume of those for allergies. A lot of time you don't need to give it for food allergies in babies less than a year. They don't tend to get the respiratory compromise. If your baby eats something, vomits profusely, and or starts you know coughing and wheezing, then yes, you do want to call 911 for that. But it's very rare. Babies typically don't have a built-up immune system enough to mount a really big allergic response. Um, let's see, eight-month-old with red eyes and rubbing and crying. Um, I would just double check, make sure they don't have pink eye. Um, sometimes that can be really itchy and irritating. And also sometimes with viruses, your eyes get dry and they kind of hurt and babies will do that. But if it's just with, if it's only when she's crying, then that could be normal. 
oh, baby snapping in the face with the mask. I know they totally do that. I, uh, I couldn't wear an earrings, earrings or a necklace for like, you know, until my baby was over a year because she would just grab at everything. They love doing that. Also hair. My hair is super short. I have a pixie cut. So like, yeah, they, <laughs> um, it's partly for practicality because babies love to grab handfuls of hair and pull it. Let's see. Um, sitting in an eighth month old. So babies around six months of age should be able to tripod sit and around nine months of age can sit on their own. But it can happen even two or three months later than that and still be normal. So with blood in the stools with the breastfed baby, um, you have to cut out all dairy products, including things like yogurt, butter, like it can't even be in stuff. It takes six to eight weeks for it to totally stop. It should get progressively better over time. If your baby has a dairy allergy and they're formula fed, you have to switch to a hydrolyzed formula. So that's something like Nutramagen, Alimentum, or Pyramino. Um, those formulas typically taste bad, they smell bad, they make their poop kind of grayish and smell bad, and that's unfortunately normal. They're pre-digested formulas, but if your baby has a severe allergy and going to formula, you know, on formula, they do need to do one of those hydrolyzed ones. Um, but yeah, those are, I would double check too with your pediatrician to make sure that they really need a um, also with dairy allergies, they tend to cross react with soy allergies. So if you've cut out dairy and they're still having some blood in the stools, I would also cut out soy, including things like soy sauce, you know, ramen noodles, things like that, that can have soy sauce in them. Um, or also any, like sometimes even soy lecithin. So just check the ingredients for those. It, soy is in a lot of things here in the U.S. And also milk, unfortunately, and whey and casein are the two milk proteins that they're reacting to. It is okay to start rice cereal in a five-month-old. Um, you also don't need to. So rice cereal is something you can skip entirely. But um, yeah, and I'm so sorry. I think that my phone's about to die. I'm getting funny sounds. Uh, <laughs> let's see, a rash under the neck. Treat it with diaper rash creams. It's the same process. So if they're getting that like rash in the creases here because they have those big fat necks, they get a little milk in there, it gets rashy, um, clean it with a wet washcloth and then put on regular diaper cream. That will help. Uh, you could do something like Aquaphor, Vaseline, A&D ointment, Desitin, all of those are fine. And if they're getting little tiny red dots around it, it can be colonized with yeast. And then you can use the Nystatin cream for that or an over-the-counter antifungal cream like Lotrimin, um, Tinactin, any of those kind of antifungal jock itch cream, uh, ringworm cream, all of those are the same thing that can help. Also vinegar is antifungal. So you can mix apple cider vinegar and water one to one, dab it on with a cotton ball and that'll help that go away. And that's just if they have the little dots around it, like if it's solid red with some little dots. Same with the diaper area, solid red with little dots is usually a yeast infection or yeast colonization. All right, you guys, I'm so sorry. My phone's gonna die, so I've gotta run. But thank you so much for all of your questions. This was super fun. I'm gonna try to do this again uh, next Monday morning. So I'll see you all then. Bye. How do I stop this? I don't really know. Ah, okay, here we go.